Jesus, we appreciate you. Jesus, we appreciate you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of life. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better. Amen. amen. Your destiny will take a new turn. Amen. The events of your life, they will change positively. Amen. Say amen like a believer. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Tell your neighbor, it's time to prophesy. Time to prophesy. Put your hands together for Jesus and take your seat. prophesying against the forces that limit destiny. But before we go on, I'd like to remind us, like I said in the morning, please, everyone, when you come to church, be security conscious. I've said it, those two, two seats at the back, no church members that limit destiny. An understanding of our true destiny enables us to know what to expect. If you don't know what God has created you for, you will not know what to expect. An understanding of your true destiny will enable you to know what to tolerate and what not to tolerate. An understanding of your true destiny will enable you to know what to confront, what to resist, and what to insist. There is what you must resist. There is what you must insist. There is what you must confront. There is what to expect. If you don't know what your true destiny contains, you may look like an unfortunate child. You may look like someone that was given to given battle by mistake. Which kind of life am I living, self? I can't understand what is happening to me. I'm tired of this life. No, you cannot be tired of the life. Because God did not give you a wrong life. God did not give you a wrong destiny. But the truth is, we must know what is destiny. We have been hearing destiny, destiny, destiny. What is destiny? Until destiny is defined, you will not know what you are destined for. So destiny must be defined so that you know what you are destined for. Until destiny is defined, you will not know what you are programmed for. You will not know what is your portion. You will not what, know what is your allotment and what is your inheritance. The psalmist said, the Lord is the portion of my inheritance. Psalm 16. Verse 5. He said, the Lord is the portion of my inheritance. And of my cup, thou maintainest my lot. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance. Destiny talks about the content of the plan of God for your life. Content. Before you talk of container, you also talk of content. It is content that determines container. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Now has he entered into the heart of man what God has prepared. So there is something prepared for you. There is something prepared for me. Destiny talks about the manifestation of God's purpose for my life. For your life. Before you were born, I knew thee. And before you were formed, I consecrated thee and ordained thee for this purpose. So there is a purpose, there is a plan. For I alone know the plan that I think towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you a future, a hope, and an expected end. 
So you don't have a disfigured destiny. You have a glorious destiny. God made a concrete plan for every one of us. Concrete. No one can outplan God. He's a master planner. No wonder scripture said that his ways are past finding out. But every man's true destiny is revealed in the word. The psalmist said, it is written in the books concerning me. In the volume of the books. So, the moment you begin to discover the things that are written concerning you, you get more excited that my future is bright. That there is hope for me. I will not be where I am now. Very soon I'm changing levels. You talk with confidence. Because God cannot misplan your life. God cannot misplan your destiny. Here is also, you can't give yourself a destiny. You are given a glorious destiny by God. Can you give yourself a destiny? Can you choose where you were born? You can't. God has given each and every one of us a glorious destiny. A glorious destiny. Likewise again, no man gave you a destiny so no man is permitted to stop your destiny. Did you get that? You didn't give me a destiny. How can you stop my destiny? No, you are not permitted. No, you don't have that power. No, you don't have that right. You didn't give me a future. You can't abort my future. No man gave you a destiny, so no man can stop your destiny. In other words, no man can stop the plan of God for your life. But it calls for understanding. Because scripture says, they know not. Neither will they understand. It says, all the foundation of the earth are out of course. Things will go out of course if you don't know. Your destiny can go off course if you don't know. But the moment you know, man, you must reclaim. You must recover. In your destiny, in my destiny, is unlimited success. The part of the joss is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Whatsoever he doeth, he shall do what? Prosper. <laughs> Whatsoever. If you are selling sand now, you will prosper. If you are selling pure water now, you will prosper. Whatsoever he doeth, he shall do what? Prosper. Unlimited success. Unlimited. Unlimited. Inside your destiny too is unlimited progress. They go from strength to strength. Everyone appearing before God in Zion. The part of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. I will go before thee and make the crooked place straight. Now God can't be going before thee and your journey is limited. No way. He gave you a destiny so he will lead you in the destiny. And if God leads you, the journey must go where? Likewise, in your destiny is unending abundance. Unending abundance. You are not permitted to lack. Since I was born, now I'm getting old. I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children beg bread. The young lion may suffer for what? But they that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. So you are not permitted to lack. You are not permitted to beg. You are not permitted to be in want. For my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Please, 
Make sure you know who gave you a destiny. <laughs> Knowing who gave you a destiny is very important. My God shall supply all my needs. And when you are experiencing short, lack, hardship, it's time to react. It's time to react. Lord, can you watch your own child starve? Can you watch your own child beg bread? <laughs> Jesus said, if your father being evil knows how to give good gifts, he said, how much more will your heavenly father? He said, we told not good from whom it is due when it is in thy power of thy hand to act. So God cannot withhold anything from you. Cannot withhold anything from you. So you have unlimited abundance. Do you know that some people eat with fear? Hey, eat small, eat small, eat small. Do you want it to finish? Eat small, eat small. Bigger all. You want to finish the food? Do you know why? They are not sure another supply is coming. They are not what? Send him out. Quick, quick. Move! They are not sure another supply is coming. But hear me. <laughs> and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. <laughs> and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And glorify the name of the Lord their God who has dealt wondrously with you. What I found in scripture is you shall eat in plenty. Not you shall eat with carefulness. Be careful. Remain. Just. No, it's not your portion. If you have been careful in your eating, it will change today. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Inside your destiny is unlimited fruitfulness. <laughs> God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And God said unto them, be fruitful. So what God said, are you what I'm saying now? Is to establish what has been transferred to you. Unlimited fruitfulness unlimited fruitfulness. Now to let you know that you don't have an expiring date for fruitfulness, look at what the Bible said in Psalm 92. The righteous, verse 12, shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like the cedar of Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Look at verse 14. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and what? Flourishing. Look at verse 15 now. To show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness with him. To show and scripture says, he abided faithful. He cannot deny himself. So you are over fruitful. I saw on, was he on TV or which program? A 70 year old woman gave birth to a baby girl. Is that one hormone now? No, is that one hormone? Is that one hormone? God can do anything he wants. Are you wrong saying now? I say what? It's in his power. In your destiny also is marital fulfillment. If you are not fulfilled maritally, you must react. You must do what? Yes. What did God say? 
It is not good for a man to be alone. If I will make for him what? A helpmate. The reason why God make a helpmate is to guarantee marital fulfillment and the accomplishment of our ultimate destiny. Ultimate destiny. God knows that Adam cannot be fulfilled until a helper appears. Until a helper appears. God knows that Adam cannot see the true and the complete destiny he has for him until a helper appears. One shall chase a thousand. Two shall chase what? Ten thousand. And they shall have better reward for their what? Labor. So your fulfillment maritally has already been defined and programmed by God. So whatever is contending with it is set for a damaging. Is set for a crushing. Now hear me. Marriage is not man's design. It's God's institution. And anyone fighting your marriage comes under a curse from the Lord. Yes. It's like saying now you want to attack Covenant University. <laughs> what will happen to the person? Uh, what will he attract? You will attract the curse. Oyeriko will curse you first. God will go come land upon you second. Marriage is not uh, my father said I should marry or my mother. No! God's institution. And when you are attacking God's institution, you come under attack from God. And you know when God starts his attack, he will attack everything around you. So your marriage must be fulfilled. Amen. Your marriage must be glorious. Amen. Hear me? Hear me and hear me where? I don't know what is threatening you. Know this God. Know this God. That's why you must know what you are destined for maritally. You must know what to say no to. You must know what to confront. You must know what to resist. And you must know what to insist. God did not bring you into a marriage so that you will be shedding tears. Or so that you will live in depression or in sorrow. No! He designed it for fulfillment, for glory. In your destiny also is unlimited favor. For thou will bless the righteous and compass him with favor as a shield. Favor. We will dwell on this more on Sunday with new things that God is revealing. Favor. Favor places a limit on how far your destiny can go. The more favored you are, the more flourishing your destiny becomes. The more favored you are, the more flourishing your destiny becomes. Oh, Naphtali, satisfied with favor, possess thou the west and the south. So favor determines what you possess. So it's not your labor. Thank God for labor. Labor is good. He that must not walk, let him not eat. But you need favor. There are some things you can't get by labor, but by favor. Too many things. In your destiny also is too much money. You like that one? In your destiny is too much what? In your destiny is too much houses. In your destiny is too much cars. I know some of them don't even know that it's in the Bible. I don't even know that it's in the Bible. In your destiny is too much money. Where was Abraham walking? 
for him to have 318 servants with wife and children. In that kind of place, do you know how many cows they will be killing in a day? That's 300 servants with wife and children. Everybody must chop now. Good. And scripture said, and God has blessed him in silver, in gold, and in cattle, and in what? All things. That's what scripture said. And Abraham was very rich in cattle. Now cattle is what they use in measuring wealth then, in silver, and in gold, and in all things. All things. Are you getting it now? So, you are not permitted to lack oh. Hey. Hey. Now, do you know that Jesus was rich? Judas was thiefing the money. But the money refused to finish. Are you not saying that? He was thiefing the money and yet they didn't feel the effect of the money that he thief. That goes to let you know that it was too plenty. You know there's a way they will thief you. You won't even know that something left. Are you not saying now? In your destiny is too much money. You are even afraid saying the amen. Yeah. They are afraid. Do you know why there is too much money in your destiny? Because you are part of the persons God will use to spread the gospel far. Yeah. Okay, let's see. It's Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 17. Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 17. Cry it saying, The Lord said, the Lord of hosts, thou said the Lord of hosts, my city through what? Did he say through poverty? Did he say through recession? Through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. And the Lord God shall yet comfort Zion. Now hear me. Do you know why God will have to bless me? Because I take delight in comforting people. But thou shalt remember, for it is the Lord thy God that giveth thee power to get what? So if it is with God, I'm not afraid because I know it will come. Tell your neighbor it must come. So through prosperity, you will spread the gospel far and also you will comfort those that are mourning in Zion. Scripture say again, the poor you will always have in your midst. Why will you always have the poor in your midst? So that you that have been blessed, he said, I will bless you and thou shalt be a blessing. So it won't stop coming. It will keep flowing. Amen. I say it will keep flowing. Amen. In your destiny also is too many houses. Scripture says you will build goodly houses. Yeah. Not boys' quarter. Yeah. Not face me, I face you. Yeah. You will build goodly houses and live in them. He said you will not build for another to dwell in. Which means as you are building, no man is permitted to cut short your life. You know, those days, their limousine is a horse. You know, those kind of horse that, they, that has a house on top. You understand? Uh, hey, that uh, they will now step down and you will now climb and enter and the horse will do jege, 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 jege. <laughs> it's a cut. Uh, hey, good. Now we have different brands of cars. Oh. I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk again. Is that I should talk? <laughs> you know, every year, new cars evolve.
There's a car now. It doesn't only have TV. It has fridge. It has bed. The person that must drive you must be very careful. <laughs> Before you go and throw, throw you away. I hear what I'm saying now. This one, even if they match gallop, you won't feel anything. You ask the, ah, ah, how come we arrived so quick? Oh God, the journey was so sweet. You will get there. <laughs> Any person that his car has been doing, push me, I push you. <laughs> Very soon, I prophesy, God will change your car. Now, having known what is the content of your destiny, the target of the enemy is not just you, but the things ordained to make your destiny great. But I want you to hear this. The things that are out to limit our destiny, they are both internal and external. Are you know what I'm saying now? That's why you must know what is written concerning you so that you will not know, you will also know what not to permit, what not to allow, what you must confront. What are the things that limit our destiny internally? Number one is our mouth. This mouth is a killer, it's a destroyer. Hidden in the tongue is the power of life and what? Death. He said, them that love you shall eat the fruit thereof. Your mouth can puncture your glorious destiny. Your mouth can scatter your enviable future. He that must see many better days shall keep his mouth from speaking God's. The tongue is the most sensitive part. The smallest. But it works the most havoc. Destiny is molded by the tongue. Destiny is also destroyed by the tongue. Do not say before an angel is an error. Your mouth can wreck your destiny. Nobody wants to help me. I'm tired of this life. Things are not just working. As you are saying it, if things were not working well before, they will enter a higher frequency. They will get more spoiler. They will be spoiling the more. The mouth. The mouth. Do you know you can use your mouth and scatter your family? I don't know which kind. Why did God even allow me to be born into this kind of family? I'm tired of this family. Run now. Change your name. But your family will be following you everywhere you go. Your mouth. Your mouth. No wonder scripture said. A fool, when he keeps quiet, is even regarded as a wise man. A fool. God gives you two ears for double hearing, two eyes for double seeing, but when it comes to the mouth, he gives you only what? Did he give you another one here? <laughs> the reason is, so that you know what goes out of the mouth. You know, what goes out of the mouth, you may not be able to recover it all. You may never be able to recover it. Be careful. Many destinies are low today because of what they said. I remember in 1997, Papa preached a message on uh, the cause of the tongue. It was a mouth deliverance service. Some people have used their mouth to tear every aspect of their destiny. As they are tearing their own, they are tearing other people. 
And they are thinking they are hailing them, not knowing that they are creating holes inside their own glorious destiny. The people you think that you are tearing, they are going forward. You, you are going backward. If your destiny must be glorious, you must sow your mouth. Tell your neighbor, sow your mouth. The reason why you need to sow your mouth is so that you know what to say per time. Anything you know that will not profit you or profit your destiny, don't say it. You know, you say many horrible things when anger is loaded. You know, when anger is loaded, the things you say, if they replay it for you, you say, me, am I the one that said this? No, it's not me. It's not me. How can you say it's me that said it? I'm not sure it's me. No, you are the one that said it. Are you wrong saying now? So, you must be careful with your mouth. In fact, you are the first prophet of your life. My destiny is blessed. My future is glorious. I am blessed. I'm highly favored. It shall be well with my soul. Let the righteous say, it shall be well with my soul. You must say it to yourself. Something they do you, I know. Let the righteous say, it shall be well with my soul. You must keep saying it. It shall be well with my soul. It shall be well with my career. It shall be well with my business. It shall be well with my future. It shall be well with my, my pocket. It shall be well with my family. It shall be well with my children. They shall be the head and not the tail. Oh, all parents hear this. Your children, they may not be here. Whether they are in body house or not, carry their picture every morning, prophesy, anoint them. I put upon you the spirit of excellence. You will succeed. You will be the head. By this anointing, I decree your memory is blessed. You will not underachieve. You will overachieve. <laughs> you, you are the prophet over their life. So you prophesy. You keep prophesying and declaring. The same way you do for yourself. When you look at your child and say, Nama. <laughs> do you know what you have done? You have put the spirit of Nama upon him. <laughs> when you look at your child and say, Useless thing. You have confirmed that child. Anywhere he goes or she goes, useless. It will not be useful. You look at your child. The thing they do me, eh? your children go do you. <laughs> you have placed a generational curse upon the child. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Huh? Am I saying the truth? That's how many destinies have been damaged. Damaged. Do you know why? Was Isaac a prophet? But when he blessed his, uh, he, he, uh, Jacob, he said, I have blessed him, and indeed, he shall do what? <laughs> I have blessed him, and indeed, he shall be blessed. What he did was to prophesy. May the Lord give you the dew of heaven. Amen. And of the fatness of the earth. Amen. With plenty corn and wine. Amen. Be Lord over thy brethren. <laughs> he prophesied it and it came to pass. So your mouth. Your mouth creates your first limit. Over your destiny. That's why you must be careful. Say not a confederacy. What they call a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fears. When men are saying there is a casting down. Thou shall say there is a lifting up. You must say it. I'm not going down with the economy. I'm, I'm pressing forward. Doors are opening for me. Opportunities are coming my way. You must keep declaring it. Number two. Internal forces that fight us 
is fear. Fear is the enemy of faith. Fear drives God and brings in Satan. Fear creates depression. Fear creates loss of hope. Fear makes you hopeless. Fear. Fear is the ticket you give to the devil to deal with you. And God said, fear not. Every day you must take the capsule of what? Fear not. We have 365 days, Abi. One per day. Every day, fear not. He said, fear thou not. Thou warm Jacob, I will be with thee. Fear not. Thou warm Jacob. Thou warm Jacob means no matter how sluggish and slow your life is, fear not, I will help you. When God helps a worm, what will a worm do? It will fly. A worm is crawling. And God is saying, fear not, thou warm Jacob. Meaning, warm. Oh yeah, it's time to fly. So no matter how sluggish you think your destiny is, fear not. You will recover. I say you will recover. Fear not. As long as day and night is changing position, fear not. The covenant is still at work. And God said, my covenant will I not break nor alter the word that have gone out of my mouth. Fear not. Number three, internal enemy, internal forces, is ignorance. Ignorance. Very terrible. The thicker your ignorance, the more squeezed your destiny. Ignorance is the worst punishment against any destiny. Ignorance will not allow your destiny to assess what God has prepared for you. They know not. Neither will they understand. All the foundation of the earth are what? Out of course. Now, let's read Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into what? Captivity. Because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are what? Famished. And their multitude dry up with what? Tasks. They go into what? Captivity because they have no knowledge. And ye shall know that truth. And the truth you know shall do what? Set you free. So knowledge frees our destiny. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do what? Exploit. So knowledge is crucial to breaking the limits of destiny. Knowledge gives you a picture of possibilities. It shows you things that can come to pass in your life. It shows you the things that you can assess in your destiny. That's why if you are not increasing in knowledge, you are in trouble. Your destiny is in trouble. If you are not increasing in knowledge, your destiny is in trouble. Your destiny will suffer more slow motion. You your increasing in knowledge is not optional because that is one of the major platforms to break the limits, even the external limits. And lastly, under internal forces, is household wickedness. They are everywhere, in every village, in Panshin, in Mangu, in Bokos. In Shendam, they're everywhere. In Basa. They are just everywhere. Household wicked. Even in uh, Miyadiko. They are just everywhere. Household wicked. Let somebody just see now that you are just trying to do it. Everybody's face will change. Jacob told his brothers, I see you people bowing to me which means I'm going great. Me, bow to you. Something they do you. <laughs> Papa, you follow. I even see you, you bow. I think, um, uh, by the Henry, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Come, come. You see this guy? Mo will deal with her. She will go back for her. Mo will throw her inside a hole. 
so that inside that hole there, he go, he go see who go bow for and there. <laughs> So they felt that they were arranging his destiny by throwing him to the pit. I hear what I'm saying now. But they didn't know that what he saw sticked and it was bound to come to pass. So with all the things he suffered, they didn't know they were helping to push him into his true destiny. Now hear me. Some people may be organizing trouble for you. But they don't know they are pushing you into your true destiny. Do you know why? Scripture say, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his words, purpose. Now when finally they came and bowed, do you know me? I am that Joseph that you sold as a slave. You meant it for evil, but God turned it around for my deliverance. You meant it for evil. Now, hear this. No matter what, household wickedness, even church hold wickedness. You know, there is household wickedness. This is another household. Though. Inside this household, there are wicked men and wicked women who has vowed not to change. Eh? <laughs> they are the ones packing all the curses that are leaving this place. Even with all their conspiracy, your story will be changing. Amen. Your destiny will be going forward. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Now, it got to a point they say, buy us and our land. What is remaining now is only our body and our land. <laughs> buy us. <laughs> we read it yesterday, Abby. Buy us and give us seed. Buy us. Buy us. Hear me? Your enemies will bow to you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. But I like to believe that Joseph was praying in his heart. Lord, cause their plans to fail. Lord, cause their plans to fail. Every plan they have made to make sure that this dream don't come to pass. Lord, scatter their plan. No one that scripture says, surely they shall gather. But not by me. Anyone that gather against you shall do what? Fall. They will fall. They will fall. Now, external forces has to do with coven powers. Time will fail us to read scripture. Ezekiel chapter 11. He says, son of man, can you see this man? <laughs> I saw Peletiah and Beniah. They have set up a coven to lock up men's destiny. People that carry picture, that go to your Facebook page, and print your picture. People that come to your house and say, give me a bun, let me watch. And as they are watching, they don't remove one. People that will come and write your name and go and submit to one native doctor. I don't want her to marry you. I don't want... <laughs> I don't want her to get pregnant. You will die. I said the person will die. Like I said before, you didn't give me destiny. So you can't determine what comes. No! That's why God said, my counsel shall stand and I will do all of my good pleasure. God doesn't seek permission from anybody to determine who is blessed. He doesn't. So what did God say? He said, son of man, prophesy against Peletiah. Prophesy against Beniah. He said, and as I began to prophesy, Peletiah died. Died. So whoever wants to cage your destiny, you will prophesy against them. Amen. Whoever has vowed that you will not go forward, you will prophesy against them. Amen. Whoever has vowed that you will not marry, you will prophesy against them. Amen. Whoever has vowed that you will not give birth, you will prophesy against them. That's why your I give you a mouth and a wisdom which your adversary shall not be able to resist nor gain say. You must prophesy. It's, and God say, I will do the very thing that I hear you say. Not some things. If you don't say it, I don't do anything. 
Now let's read it to let us know why it's important. Psalm 81 and verse 10. Psalm 81 and verse 10. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, not keep quiet, and I will feel it. Verse 11. But my people will not hearken to my voice, and Israel will none of me. So I gave them up to their own hearts, lost, and they walked in their own counsel. Look at the next verse. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. Verse 14 now. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. So God is waiting for your declaration to turn his hand against your enemies. But watch out after today. The hand of God will be against your enemies. The hand of God will be against your adversaries. The hand of God will be against the enemies of your destiny. Son of man, prophesy. The next one is enchanters. Time we fail us to read also Numbers 23. Balaam hired Balak to come cause Jacob and Israel. He paid him money. Just like some people collect recharge card. Let me be giving you recharge card so that you will be getting me daily updates. God will punish all of you. Anyone involved in such acts, you are under a curse from God. Come curse me, Jacob and Israel. And now he said, wait, let me go and inquire first. He said, what did God tell you? He said, the Lord has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Neither has he seen any perverseness in Israel. How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? He said, from the cliff I see him. How sh- the Lord has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Which microscope you use see evil? He was very angry. He said, okay, maybe you didn't see well. Come, let's go to Guratop. From Guratop, you can see him well. He said, I want you to stay in Guratop so that you can see him well and curse him for me. He came back, he said, he said, there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. So anyone making enchantment against your destiny, their altar will catch fire. Their altar will catch fire. Whoever is hired and whoever is the sponsor, vengeance will strike upon their head. If you are saying amen, say better, Amen. Number five, number four, is it number four? Okay, number three, is evil night watchers. You say who? There are evil night watchers. They watch to hear what you have said, to look at what they will use to plan against you. He said he will rise up on the third day. Make sure he doesn't rise. Even in this church, there are evil watchers. They come to watch whether pregnancy has taken place so that they will go to Kovum. But let's see what happened. Matthew 27, verse 63. Matthew 27, verse 63. Saying, sir, we remember that he deceived that that remember that the the deceived said while he was yet alive after three days i will rise again go to the next verse command therefore that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day lest the disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people he is risen from the dead so the last error should be worse than the first look at the next verse now Pilate said unto them, You have a watch. Go your way and make it as sure as you can. The next verse. 
So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a what? Watch. There are evil night watchers. In fact, we have day watchers. They watch every bit of everything that is happening to you so that they can go to their coven. But hear me? When power struck, they slept. My prayer tonight, your enemy will sleep. I don't know which kind of sleep God will give them all. Your enemies will sleep. Your enemies will sleep! So God gave them a deep sleep when Jesus rose. When your breakthrough will take place, God will give your enemies deep sleep. Whoever is angry that a breakthrough is about to take place for you, the God of forget it, but give them deep sleep. Some of them will sleep, or sleep and not wake up. They will sleep the sleep of death. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. But you must prophesy. You must do what? Prophesy. Now the last one is star hunters. I hear that a star is born in Nazareth. Go and find out for me. There cannot be two kings in one place. So the astrologers, they began to trail the star of Jesus. They began to trail the star of Jesus. They follow, they follow, they follow, they follow. But on their way, God told them, don't go back, go like this. Anyone watching your star, let God blind their eyes. I say, let God blind their eyes. Rise up to your feet. If you like, keep quiet. If you like, watch who is praying. You know. But it's time to prophesy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is limiting my destiny, I scatter you by the blood. I prophesy against any force assigned to limit my destiny. By the blood of Jesus, scatter. By the blood of Jesus, I command you to scatter. Rekato zisuze, pelishi, ezototo, enrikuku, emprota nije kusate, beki kukukuruto sa, pelo disho likerete. Every operation of household wickedness against my destiny. I command your destruction by fire. Recuperiado zizonada. Shekota gagaga gagaga. Erete nekoto. Lakoto. Every oppression of household wickedness against my destiny. I command your destruction by fire. Reza neto para disuze. Shekuka berete leroto. Shekote rota berete lete. E zero chiku kaparata. Kovum powers. Manipulating issues in my destiny. Catch fire. I prophesy. Whoever is acting like Peletaya. Whoever is acting like Benaya. Against my destiny. Against my family, I prophesy against you. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. La pepre dosunzu en kaka erute ku sheko kake kerete into pa esona empalada rekuta yata sheko terete bego dosududu any program of witchcraft. Any program of witchcraft or cultic power against my glorious destiny, I prophesy against you in the name of Jesus. Scatter by fire. La pepredizo endiale shagaga recoterote 
and zeno parapa jekote ruta and kakareta jeko kakaka bego susu and kagagagagagagagagagaga rezeleberodo angels of fire arise give every evil water deep sleep angels of fire arise give every evil water deep sleep deep sleep in the name of jesus blind the eyes of every evil water 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 La koto brekete en sozo na ga 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 rekote rota jekute zekopra en radada en zududo le koprekete any power any dark power say no to my destiny fall down and die any dark power say no to my destiny i prophesy against you fall down and die in the name of jesus labaradosa and peberedota and kabara belege jegolo zagada resusa be predido jeku keporata and pepero toro jekluze ziaba and rababa bayata jeku kapa belutaka Covum powers manipulating issues in my destiny. I prophesy against you in the name of Jesus. Catch fire. Bako sute and peperedo jeko kakarete. Zesusia baba. Zesusia baba. Baradadalete. Zesosaka karatete. Lakoto brekete. Lakoto brekete. Zerushia bebereto. Any program of witchcraft. Occultic power. Against my glorious destiny. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy against you. Scatter by fire. Jekusi ababa. Engegele bododono. Every oppression of household wickedness against my destiny, I command your destruction. I prophesy your destruction by fire, by fire, by fire, angels of fire arise in the name of Jesus. Give my every enemies every evil water on assignments against my destiny. Give them deep sleep, deep sleep. Blind the eyes of every evil water. Blind the eyes of every evil water. In the name of Jesus, let them be blinded. In the name of Jesus, let them be blinded. In the name of Jesus. Let them be blinded. Every dark program, every wicked program, every wicked agenda marked out against me by your cultic power. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Scatter, scatter, scatter. Erodobo Shagaba, Jekuke Preketelia. Lessons on Abre, Jekuka Brete, Rezo, Likuka, Pero Diaba, Lason Ziadega, Lason Ziadega, Jerosiza Labata. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. As you partake of this communion, whatever represents a hidden covenant, fighting your glorious destiny, they are swallowed up. I say they are swallowed up. Watch out the kind of progress you are going to be making from today. It will shock everyone in your family. 
Say amen like a believer. Amen. Doors that have not opened for you before, they will begin to open in the name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. amen. Whatever was once we tell from you, I decree a forceful release for you in the name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, make it better. Amen. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. It shall be well with you. Amen. You are entering the best season of your life. I say you are entering the best season of your life. In Jesus' name we pray. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. To stop your destiny. Let the blood stop your stoppers. Let the blood of Jesus stop your stoppers. Whatever is operating in the air against your destiny, against your career, against your business, against your family, by the power of the blood, let them be silenced. By the blood of Jesus, let them be silenced. Say amen like a believer. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. They are scattered. Their plan concerning you will fail. In the name of Jesus. The forces on assignment against you. Let them be silenced in the name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Any power on assignment to stop your destiny. Let them be stopped by the blood of Jesus. Let them be stopped by the blood of Jesus. Let them be stopped by the blood of Jesus. Let them be stopped by the blood of Jesus. Let the oppression be stopped by the blood of Jesus. Let their gang of scatter by the blood of Jesus. Let their hidden plans scatter by the blood of Jesus. So shall it be. You will win. You see this month? is your turning point month. Everything about your destiny will turn around 360 degrees. You will not be on the same spot again. Say amen like a believer. The things you have been struggling to get, watch out, they will be cheaply delivered in your hand. Your days of sorrow, they are over. It shall be well with you. I see you assessing the best of life. I see your helpers rushing to help you. It shall be well with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Don't forget, go protected. Go defended. Your celebration has started. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the goodness together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Amen.